Hello, we begin. Um, let me float this on top. Um, some of you might be wondering, questioning, um, where do I start? How do we get my story, my narrative into a public place? Excuse me. Um, does it take money? Does it take collaborators? Does it take effort? Does it take um, uh, basically capital reserves that you don't have? You're young. You don't want to spend money to make money. Um, but you do want to be devoted to this Aristotelian idea of leisure, which is not leisure time formatted going to Disneyland or having a picnic on the beach, but involves um, cultural activities. Um, uh, uh, cultural responses to your time, your place. Um, this is part of the, the, the sort of impetus behind the blogging world that um, for um, little to no money of just a laptop and a YouTube account, you can become a blogger. But I'm talking about that's a media world. That is a filmed world. That's a two-dimensional world. How do you, without money, without capital reserves, interface with your public culture? There's open mics of, uh, I've done it at the Bowery Poetry Club, the um, uh, open mics for um, musicians in the bars of New York. Um, uh, so we see in the last episode, we had this general critique of neoliberal capitalism as kind of this um, unregulated uh, uh, corrosion on the labor theory of value once people move to cities. 60 to 70 percent of the world's population live in cities uh, divested of the harvest theory of the value of the agrarian um, epoch. And so when you come to the city to harvest something, harvest wages, harvest a, a cool job, this is no longer founded on this trickle up theory from the family to the locality, to the local state, to the state, to the, the government, which we still live in a Keynesian world where that is somewhat regulated, but um, when our families from wherever, um, Asia, Europe, South America, um, uh, entered, left the agrarian estates, such as what happened in China, and entered into um, a, a, a urban confluence anywhere, New York City and the surrounding tri-state area, one of the biggest in the world, um, how did that system of harvest theory of value that you, there's a type certainly conjoined with risk and fate, um, what you put in is what you get out, what you get out is what you put in, this notion that there's an immediate uh, response to um, uh, 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 the kind of cycles of times. So once you enter in the city with that harvest theory of value, you're looking to harvest your labor, which is leveraged as profit. Um, you can leverage it more through debt, um, hence going to college is supposedly a um, good move if you want uh, to enter the service economies, um, harvesting. Um, but that it also tends, in kind of a defense of, of laissez-faire capitalism, it tends to uh, 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 diminish risk and responsibility um, when you look for the safe way out in, in a time that is highly risky, highly volatile, uh, many changes, as we noted changes happening <coughs> within one generation, so that my generation living with your generation has to punt or change with each other rather than having generational gaps where the next generation attempts to de-skill the older generation. Um, most notably what happened 
in the 90s in the uh, kind of the de-skilling of an older population printing was a thing of uh, video stores like blockbuster was a thing to um uh that generation got over perhaps since 2008 in the subprime collapse um driving speculation of your place your design your cities your kind of free will in a, a Western uh, neoliberal capitalist society, what did that leave open for agency? Um, getting back to performance, what do we need money to do something? No, we do not. Um, we need burning questions, we need desire to um, form a, a, a performance debate aesthetic uh, thinking spaces in public environments. And I am going to look at two or three things. Um, first of all, I'm going to look at the Japanese Buto dance, which came out of uh, uh, German expressionist dance in theater of the 20s, um, sort of transported to uh, Japan as certain Japanese artists uh, tended to visit the West uh, during the, the resurgence, the, the reinvention of Meiji uh, Japan. Um, worked on war production, worked on industrial production, worked on um, uh, cultural production or cultural um, sort of borrowing from the West. Um, uh, so here on the, this mirror image here, is a, a, a small um, sort of demonstration of the dance of the pathetic body. One response was to German expressionist dance theater. We have Le Bon, we have a number of, um, let's call them, um, in artistic world, left-wing responses to almost everything, music, painting, architecture for sure in the Bauhaus larger questions of modernity, which is a liberatory um, movement from Immanuel Kant and the uh, French Revolution up to our age, was kind of grinding down, uh, grinding down in a couple of facts. There was World War I, which no one really knew where it came from, except if you did a capitalist analysis of challenges to overseas empires, French and English. Spanish was all already declined, and Germany and the United States um, uh, sought their position in a, a, a growing um, competitive field. England could barely manage its, uh, its unjust colonialist empires overseas. Um, France was uh, a second um, and so um, the industrial challenges made to these old um, hegemonic forces, mostly England, uh, were Germany and America. Uh, again, if you read that great book, um, the, the Effect of Sea Power in History, um, Germany wished to take over the land-based um, uh, uh, hegemony from France. Um, principally by driving east, and America sought to be a major sea power, taking it from England. Um, so the second response to um, performance form, arte povera, the Italian version of poor art dealing with found things, um, uh, involved uh, uh, this very unique, and I work with a number of these uh, dancers, very unique Japanese form that is very European. Um, the second influence on top of the, the collapsed um, German uh, project of World War I um, sort of imploded but resulted in many, many good um, debated things such as uh, the Bauhaus, uh, German painters, German expressionist painters returning from the trenches and trying to express the war. Many of the painters like Franz Marc and Egon Schiele, I think ironically, who studied at um, 
these new modernist forms, Egon Schiele and uh, there's one other German painter who would have been in the same um, class in the uh, uh, Vienna Art Academy as uh, a, a corporal Hitler um, who applied to art school and could not get in because of his, his misapplied perspective or whatever it was. Um, um, a lot of these uh, German, German-speaking artists had died in World War, the trenches of World War I, large waste. Um, this should have been a indicator, and it was, that whole societies, borrowing from Bismarck, needed uh, centralized governments to cool off or heat up economies outside of the market forces. Many blamed market forces as the cause of war antiquated systems like um, stronger market force societies such as United States and Germany attempted uh, through force to um, disrupt um, the older ossified colonial forces. Japan took its note from uh, the American um, contact or invasion of Matthew Perry and through, I lived in Tokyo and studied this, the Meiji Restoration, um, attempted to take everything from uh, the West except the, the core um, the questions, the core, you know, individuality, Socratic method, things like that. But they did love the business suit, which is Napoleonic, the, um, which strangely the, the male business suit has not changed very much since Napoleon, the tie covering the buttons, things like that. Um, the uh, um, Meiji Restoration uh, embraced battleships, embraced internal combustion engine, embraced electricity, embraced um, all of the gadgets and the trappings of, of the West, most notably England, which sought to stave off um, this direct challenge from United States. Um, uh, in its growing belligerence and in the form of navies. The English helped the Japanese build this incredible navies by the time of the 30s, 40s. Um, it had attacked Pearl Harbor in very sophisticated um, observation of how the English attacked Toronto in Italy, the, it, it attacked and sank the um, the Na Italian Navy fleet at Toronto uh, using torpedo planes, direct borrowing from this, um, uh, and um, it kind of worked. Uh, America and its hegemony spreading toward the Pacific, um, dealing with itself as a sea power, uh, influencing the major ports, employing gunboat diplomacy. China was a mess because of its ossified uh, ritualistic um, inability to, to um, shift gears from initial contact. Certainly they very much made up for it in the 80s and 90s. Uh, but the Meiji Restoration as a small pirate-based um, country um, had a natural uh, proclivity toward the Navy, just as New England and America had a pro proclivity toward navies also. Um, um, so we see this collision. This second element on top of embracing Western modernity, which includes the, the, the loneliness of the individual, the loneliness and the kind of solipsism of the Western artists, the... the uh, uh, Toulouse-Lautrec painting in brothels, uh, Van Gogh painting in the south of, of France, uh, slowly going insane, uh, many think by, by sucking on or twirling his brushes with, with cadmium um, chemicals in his blues and yellows. Um, uh, the modernist, high modernist ideal as the painter as the revered um, uh, representation of individuality, um, uh, mostly subjective, um, uh, solipsistic, um, became an ideal, an ideal embodied thereafter in 
Picasso in uh, 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 de Kooning uh, of, of uh, um, and in uh, Rothko uh, and a number of artists that sort of terminated in the 50s. Okay, the last important thing is Dance of the Pathetic Body, why it costs nothing and what I saw in parks in Tokyo. Um, Sunday mornings in Ueno Park in Tokyo, I would see occasionally one or two people doing these bizarre sorts of dances, almost like um, unfortunate, um, insane people let out of hospitals. Um, they would be performing these things. I wouldn't, they were, I don't know if they were buskering. I didn't see a cup around them. Um, but uh, the last response is kind of a Western response with deep, um, deep sort of roots in um, uh, Taoist slash um, uh, Shinto culture, localized culture, that the body is pathetic. And their main influence, their main uh, uh, direction for this was the dropping of the atomic bomb on two Japanese cities, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, from that, Hichikata and Katsuono were two, much like Asia, they looked toward um, innovators who eventually, uh, the people after, tried to codify this innovation. There were times when innovation opened up, and this was at um, Pretty much, it started in both of these dancers were working with German Expressionist dance in the 20s and by the dropping of the atomic bomb in a, a period of eight years after the war to which Japan regained its former GDP before the war, largely through war production from the Americans in the Korean War. Um, these people were performing in the streets. These two masters were setting a grammar because of their historically fortuitous times, uh, collapse and kind of reset of Japanese culture, they devise a new aesthetic. Um, this aesthetic is often to put dirt or powder or some other earthy thing upon the body, um, have these responses from the inside, Katsu Ono right here, uh, before World War II, the legend has it, he went to Argentina to see a tango performance and he um, admired the woman, I forget who it was, a woman tango performer way down on stage from his seat way back in um, Buenos Aires. And he, from that point on, wanted to perform dress up as a woman to replicate what he saw of the pathos of individual um, tango dances. Um, so we have this embracing of the grotesque because the paradigm of the nuclear age was that the body could be blown out like a candle, can be snuffed, can is, is a beautiful, terrible, grotesque victim of, of war capitalism, war overheated markets, and the agency of the individual means nothing. So the, the type of artistic direction that these people, these dancers, do is, um, is responsive to site-specific things. Therefore, I saw these performers, I think they could have even been uh, people released from mental institutions. I have, I have no idea, but they seem to be going through some form of performance in the public, not even caring who's watching, seemingly. Um, so we see uh, uh, women, men, um, uh, finding some sort of energy within, slowing down time, manipulating time. Uh, a lot of their dances are extremely slow. In the case of Sankai Juku in the 80s, they used to go into a medium-sized American city to perform, but some of their first performances happened um, while rappelling down from skyscrapers until one day someone had left the ropes out in the rain. Sounds like a song. Uh, and um, 
the rope snapped and this Bhutto performer plummeted to his death head first down these 20-story buildings and so forth. So uh, continuing this tradition, this ambiguity of the pathetic body, um, uh, this uh, tendency emerged. Um, here, uh, every day I do my designs responding to what I've seen. Um, this is some idea of perspective of uh, the vehicle as a detached room, so forth. Um, uh, the media immersive room, um, immersive structures, um, immersive structures here. I tend to react plywood structures with scaffolding. I tend to react and want to respond to the content of the material I've um, data mined for that day. Um, and into the world. Here's a famous Spanish Bhutto performer. I forget her name. I've seen her live creates these very simple structures, bubbles, you can project upon them around her. And I can only describe the effect. I've never performed Bhutto. I've worked with quite a few Bhutto performers working in media, working in site-specific spaces. Um, they've got quite a following. Um, there are core issues with um, agency is pathetic, um, a response to site-specific. There's one guy I know who went to the Ginz Arakawa um, Museum and went in this circular Zen garden. There's uh, influences from uh, uh, Chinese Taoism, uh, 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 Japanese Shintoism, which you could say is a little Taoist, localist, animist, and then Buddhism, mostly Zen Buddhist meditation. Um, these dancers find an interior language which is very contradictory to what we assume to be the, the general collectivist Asian style, but um, part of this discussion of design and performance is to show contradictions in our stereotypes of East, West, North, South, um, and show that uh, most embody this sort of um, yin-yang uh, response. One of the famous yin-yangs is, um, I mentioned already, is the Italian sense of bella figura and brutta figura. Um, the, the beautiful figure, the beauty, the looking for the aesthetic contrasted to the ugliness, the ugliness of a shouting match or a fist fight or of, of um, some form of violence in a piazza mitigated by the, the, the homeostasis of the public reacting to it. Um, uh, Bruta figura, seeing something bella like an opera in Sicily and um, audience would bring their tomatoes in case they didn't like the performance, they'd throw tomatoes at the performers. There you go. Um, but short of tomatoes being thrown at performers, we have um, the, uh, the penchant for creating architectural shells, cost next to nothing. And here she is performing on the inside. Music, um, sometimes there's music, it's not important. They could be following an interior language. Um, she, a lot of Bhutto performers perform nude or just something basic to cover up their genitalia and cover themselves with white powder. Some do not. Um, some notions or essences of Bhutto are changed over each so-called master. There's still that Asian sense of master journeyman. So this was extremely popular form in the 90s, early aughts. I don't know if it's making a resurgence. Um, and here she is. She's specifically from She's Colombian, um, so many cultures, and I think this performance is in Colombia somewhere, um, uh, Floating Point Wave, Zemina Garnica, Shige Moria, um, he's Japanese. Um, so these are of, of uh, certain Westerners who've taken on the Bhutto, Bhutto clowns, Tavo Smith and Ben Sub. Stuber. Um, again, here's the white powder, the almost nudity, the response, um, 
there are certain group, whole troops of Bhutto people. There are people who dislike Bhutto intensely as a direct, strong direction, one way. Critics of Bhutto, people subverting Bhutto. A lot like when American jazz started during the 20s pre-war in um, African American South and New Orleans and then traveled north that um, it was a very strong definite um, clear uh, uh, aesthetically viable art form such as jazz and then within it the jazz practitioners especially in the 50s started to change it out of that grew rock and roll out of that grew um, kind of experimental jazz experimental um, neoclassical music so forth so out of this German expressionist dance, um, we don't have enough time to talk about Laban, the, the German influences, um, uh, we see this response to um, dance of the pathetic body. Um, it's aiming at an ugliness, kind of, a, or at least a pathos of the body. Some bodies are very attractive, and then the ma a male, female, uh, cross-dressing, um, different variations and um, they uh, uh, perform in this duet this interesting notion of performing uh, together from interior languages from trying to coordinate kind of movements and acceptances there are whole troops there's a famous all girl Bhutto troupe who pay the rent by working in a strip club at night and performing Bhutto in the day. So there they see a continuation and even a critique of, of uh, patriarchal capitalist society by using, um, which relates back to our original discussion of leisure. What should we do in our leisure if we're bean counting or uh, stratified or uh, straight jacketed into f formatted things like Disneyland, uh, these amusement parks, even escape rooms, so forth, even, you know, middle brow to high brow drama, what, what is leisure? What, what, what are we doing with our um, time? Uh, Simone's in Bhutto dance, there's a, kind of a return and reverence for nature. Again, um, the costumes are uh, non-typical, self-portrait covered with the, with the flower, the white dust. Um, it gets into the more kind of romantic, um, emo sort of poetic thing with uh, beautiful people doing these grotesque dances. Um, that had a dimension, beauty, which we can relate to this yin yang, or in Japanese is called wabi sabi. Um, so uh, there are other practitioners who want to showcase the kind of fragile neo romantic beauty of the performer. Take away this grotesquerie. To me, this is a little middle brow and kitschy just what um, cloying, fatuous, um, what they're trying to do with the beauty. Um, they sort of went into other directions uh, like NYU performance studies goes from Bhutto into um, the vernacular um, pole dancing, rope dancing, um, the American form, uh, which could be grotesque as well as beautiful uh, is uh, what you are doing to show the male and female body in process and form. So this leads to other forms of grotesquerie. Here's a Japanese master who performs away from audiences in the woods. Um, so it brings up an interesting question, do we need an audience? Obviously we're seeing this well-composed black and white photograph of his experience, but um, no money, I suppose, what capital reserves it took to get him to this site out of Tokyo or um, Kyoto or wherever he's doing it. And um, 
he was in need of a camera in order to get this message out, which is also some is the elephant in the room. It's still performance if the camera is there. Your selfie you do at sunsets or over a nice meal or with your boyfriend, girlfriend, are still about commodifying the, the sort of experience of bliss that you're going through. Uh, here he is um, uh, on Mount Fuji. I've been up Mount Fuji, the big volcano outside of Tokyo. Puddle of Lust. Um, uh, oh, shown in Roppongi, which is a foreigner district. Um, uh, Mi Miyaki, I think he is. It almost seems like a, uh, uh, a forest mammal or something in there, scary and... Um, a ghost, a deity, or something like that. The, the Japanese have that Shinto sense that the wood deities are all around. They have a famous forest um, outside of Tokyo that uh, many, many, many suicides are committed in, and thus the mythology of their ghosts, troubled spirits, um, uh, inhabiting this forest are, are part of the, the site-specific sense, sensibility. We talked about sacred space in the previous lectures. How do these individuals create sacred spaces merely by their performance? Um, their urbing setting becomes um, a part of the performance, as the Japanese Shinto sense means that there is a nature within also. Uh, and that creates a little reserve, a place you can retreat to in the crowdedness of the city. Um, more Bhutto performers um, and, and back to the beautiful, back to the grotesque. Um, uh, Puddle of Lust here again. Um, uh, Shinjuku girls or, or, or Harajuku girls, which dress up in these different epochs, the Elvis, American 50s, um, uh, uh, Western 60s, and kind of go and perform this ritualized meeting on Sundays in Harajuku, very world famous. Um, this is, that whole culture was a driving force behind um, J-pop and um, and manga and all the forms that seem to be international forms started in Harajuku, much like um, modern American jazz has had its centers in New Orleans in Harlem in the 20s, 30s. Um, coming out here is the Harajuku girls, uh, is a subculture, conspicuous consumption amongst girls and young women. Um, Shibuya girls, which is south of Harajuku, it's Shinjuku, Harajuku, Shibuya, um, big urban confluences that these, um, we talk about the spect actor um, performing in their own um, place. Um, more Bhutto people um, dealing with the, the lessons of the site specific, again this bella figura, the idea of beautiful Bhutto, but with these um, non-public, awkward, non-daily motions. Um, I'll tag on a couple of YouTube videos for you to watch. And then we get to the real pathos. It's modern work in um, some of these countries that are now um, de becoming de-agriculturalized, sorry, it's a word, um, moving to the city and finding the, the harvest theory of value um, supplanted to what they can make changing their, their labor for um, uh, uh, ship owners, uh, small industries in these towns, um, having real effects upon their body, not looking for the aesthetics of the grotesque, but living in it. So contrast these with this. Um, what is out there? These are not performers, these are workers in Bangladesh. Um, here's uh, uh, Madalena Ghana, 
Um, again, performing I Ibuto in Rome with classical instruments. Um, uh, again, uh, 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 no garment. Uh, this is kind of a approach to arte povera, which is an Italian form, poor art. Um, uh, you just deal with site-specific things. Um, some people deal with puppets in Buto. Um, uh, the, the grotesque, here's a puppeteer, a giant puppet with the... This is Sankaijuku, which are famous for hanging upside down. Um, the notions of torture, the notions that um, you're surviving in dystopic worlds. Um, so what do you have to do with it? Uh, following Deleuze and Guattari, the schizophrenia is the natural defense for a um, dystopic world. Um, um, the simple rituals of life, the ideas of watching an individual go through spasms of, of much like jazz, these are improv improvised whether they have uh, ritualized forms or perform the same way over and over is not as important. Um, uh, the visual setting up in a city as buskers, um, seeing that maybe the Buddhist notion that, that um, many Buddhists go into the city to ask for alms um, and much like that these Buto performers go in cities to busker, perform their strange dances. I've seen a couple of these in um, Central Park, mostly in that um, Roosevelt uh, uh, um, Belvedere, uh, not the castle. I forget what that thing is on 70th Street, 74th. Um, um, so this is, creates these beautiful looks. I've been to some at BAM. Occasionally you can catch Buto performers at BAM. Um, uh, the idea of the small, um, pathetic, uh, exaggerated person, man, woman, um, uh, transgender person any th in, in a space. The idea of interaction, here's someone getting painted on while performing Buteau, painting on themselves, um, seemingly going through a medical spasm on stage to be viewed. Again, the similarities with jazz. It's an interior impetus, it's an interior agency to which the exterior vision performance is almost a byproduct. Um, for an audience which is incidental. They could be buskering at parks, as I saw in, in Never Forget It, while hearing my landlord as I'm going through on a Sunday, and his wife and my partner going through um, uh, the park and seeing one of these either performers or uh, unfortunate mentally disturbed person um, with no reference to the people passing by going through similar spasms like that. And my landlord, Japanese, elegant gentleman, turned to me and said he's either very crazy or very talented. Um, hence the, the, the kind of ambiguity. Um, creating from simple means um, expressions a lot of Americans, young Americans in the 90s and the aughts, were very attached to this Japanese import um, as a response to, I mean, certainly it fit with the whole goth emo ethic that became a um, high school archetype in these rigid, rigid high school archetypes of geeks and jocks and cheerleaders and goths and emos and uh, 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 gang members and whatever American high schools dish out in their limited algorithmic form. Um, the Buto was an alternative method and import much the way that uh, manga culture is across the world today. Um, Again, um, uh, 
both men and women are drawn to this art form, the site specific, taking what we expect of ballet performance and, and having her react in Butoh forms. There's, even in the grotesquerie, there's a type of beauty here. Um, uh, a type of pathos. It seems, you know, often bodies crawling across grounds, distorting your time and theirs. Uh, use of music. I was working with one Butoh performer who criticized another one for being too fast. Um, so time distortion, focus, many things borrowed from um, uh, Zen Buddhism. Um, the very wonderful books, Zen and the Art of Archery, Zen and the Art of Flor Floral Arrangement by two, a husband and wife German couple who lived in Japan in the 20s, wrote these wonderful books. Many of the tenets and principles from that uh, emerge uh, from this. Um, again, the grotesque, um, the almost like a possession by a devil. And uh, it's incidental if this is left out there for an audience, a lot like What's uh, Miles jazz, uh, cool jazz um, influences? Um, so this becomes um, part a retreat, an expression, um, a therapy, a connection. Let's harken back to the, the Joseph Campbell quote, uh, most people aren't out there looking for a meaning to existence as much as looking for the opportunity to feel very much alive in this art form in the workshops and in its basic tenets and throwing away its tenets once you learn them um, you find a, a heightened sense of the living uh, the ambiguities it creates outside of a performance environment um, the ambigu ambiguities it creates with desire and sexuality and, and uh, notions of gender are, are put on its head. Uh, notions of continual pathos, grotesquerie, beyond the first dropping of the atomic bomb, what it means to live as a contradiction in the nuclear age. Um, all of this is... Um, part of Buto, which I see in this photo reminded me um, a male head uh, next to the female body, this notion of both no theater and um, kabuki. Uh, no theater coming out of, of, of Buddhism, meditation, uh, specifically playing with time in that Kabuki being an exaggerated form of opera, Japanese opera, um, with a lot of costumes, a lot of pomp and circumstance, a lot of rigidified performance space. Uh, the no, no theater just took place in basically four columns. Uh, a greater relationship to Zen Buddhism there, but the grotesquery of this. Um, the Japanese Shakespeare, Chikamatsu, wrote a number of brilliant dramas, mostly about um, the clash, clash of the four cultures, the nobles, the samurai, the business people, and the farmers, peasants. Um, intermarriage or, or intimate relations through the classes. He wrote about this, I think, 400 years ago, same, about the same era as Shakespeare. But he wrote this for Bunraku puppets. Um, again, transference, immersion into a, a shifted world. Um, all of this took place. Um, back with natural things, found objects. Um, simplicity, uh, Vangeline Theater is based in um, Brooklyn. It does a lot, did a lot of workshops. Um, Min Tanaka is very famous uh, here traveling to Beijing as Beijing. Um, I went there once in 2002, um, 2010, 2015. 
Um, it blinking the eye, Beijing has changed a lot. This is they've demolishing their hutans, the little one-story um, urban huts for grand skyscrapers. And Minta and Tanaka went there. Um, uh, hut, hutan maze. Um, uh, it created a maze-like sort of one-story operations, but a lot of those. Uh, treasure of Beijing has been destroyed. I remember being in a hotel and looking left and right, seeing hutans forever. Um, in Tanaka, um, and we have people making vari variations on this, um, uh, again showing the fragility, the, the um, uh, the cleverness of the body to adapt, to readapt. And here is famous Katsu Ono. Um, I saw him uh, perform um, at a cultural house in Rapongi years ago. When was that? 96? I was taken there, and um, I'll never forget this this old 80 year old gentleman who dresses up as a, a Argentine woman tango performer. Um, had a line of very attractive uh, Japanese girls around the block to get in to see his performance, almost like an Elvis, um, to, which I found uh, incredibly strange and stimulating and, and interesting in terms of levels of, a, of aesthetic. Uh, Katsu Ono, Katsu Ono, um, uh, more um, Buto performers, um, the music, interactive music, this has opened up for a lot of avant-garde um, musicians. A couple of friends of mine were avant-garde composers um, making music for Buteau, um, trying to come to the same scale as, um, um, as the power of Buteau in doing this. Um, I don't know, oh, yes, I do have enough time. Um, so this is Dance of the Pathetic Body with, uh, I got a Japan Foundation Award dealing with the interrelation of the arts with technology. In 96, um, that was right on the cusp of the internet taking off, right on the cusp of projectors coming down in price. Um, um, it was an interesting time. Um, and we see this contrasted with the pathetic body having to work in uh, these humongous capitalist economies such as China, Japan, um, um, uh, Korea, um, Vietnam, Indonesia, and supplying, here's, uh, talk about the pathetic body here, people lining up for Thanksgiving, uh, Black Friday, they would eat their meals and then go spend nights over at, um, Walmart or wherever, Best Buy or wherever the big sales were. Now we have Black Monday online. This is this stupid uh, sheep herding aspect. But often at these things, fights break out. A couple of people were killed in a stampede toward the door. Um, I added this in the Buteau um, since the discussions, the promulgation, the, 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 levels we can talk about the pathetic body continue on off stage. Um, how did this form a performance? Um, looking for deals, uh, people sleeping um, for the so-called black, and here's the crush at the door um, early in the morning, um, sleeping, waiting, um, buying widescreen TVs. Uh, uh, again, it follows that, uh, that Native American potlatch, that you assemble your wealth in this performance and you destroy your wealth in front of other people. There is something beyond, and this is a few years ago, 2010 or so these were taken. Now we have Amazon and the big box stores, we've lived through COVID, what is on the other side of spectacle. So with Walmart, with um, Dubai included this. I've been to this ski resort in Dubai. Very strange, extremely strange. Again, is this an aspect of the pathetic body? Um, cubicles in Japan, uh, capsule hotels, um, uh, because space is at a premium. 
um, and life in a capsule hotel. So the, the bleeding off, off stage of the Buteau performer showing the pathos of the body gets back into um, uh, that uh, discussion. Um, I'm going to start this um, kind of a, this is Andy Goldsworthy, a Scottish artist who, yeah, I'm down here, who, uh, again, no money, just his time, has made um, a living for himself, commissions and so forth, just by going into any site-specific woods or natural area, looking at items and arranging these items. This is a, a series of leaves arranged um, in uh, patterns. He arranged these yellow leaves around the tree in the fall, and that makes the tree seem like it's glowing. All these are natural items. He would select stones from a beach and find patterns, the organizing mind. There's something very uh, restful and um, uh, humane about his uh, work, obviously. Also something kind of anal and OCD, um, but when it's placed in a, a natural setting, it, to me it becomes a little more freeform um, and expansive. Um, anything. He'll take the twigs and the trees and bind them. I'm not sure whether his binders are prefabricated or not. Um, but these are just this, these vertical poles put in a tree. Create for, I assume, zero money except for his work. And I don't mean to, uh, to follow this notion that capital itself is a corrosive feature on culture, because one could say we live in a neoliberal capitalist culture which gave us our liberalism and, you know, live and let live um, sort of ethos. But uh, the, the markets do strange things. Um, certainly the um, NFT and the cryptocurrency um, explosion and then deflation is the indication of the, the pump and dump aspects that there's the world and there is capital with the business of making money, not using money, but making money. And these, the, the kind of gravitational pull of both worlds have caused a degree of, of misery and beauty. Again, we, I noted an earlier, we're talking about design, design performance. The last thing was about Butoh performers. This is about Andy Goldsworthy, who's a site-specific sculptor is he a public sculptor? You have to go out in the middle of the woods to see his pieces. I don't know if he's at Storm King or Dia or whatever. I've been a while since I've been to Dia Beacon. Um, these are immensely beautiful things uh, dealing with perhaps the rip in the real. The rip in the natural real is the human consciousness. This idea of adding human order to something that has this biological order. Um, harkens back to our notion of biomimicry and, and um, similar forms. Um, here it is with the infrared camera on uh, turning the landscape pink, um, uh, uh, which they've done in a couple cinematic exercises. Uh, 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 Beasts of No Nation is about child soldiers. They did one section where the kids are high on some drugs as they're about to attack a, a government force. Um, uh, this setting, the rip in the reel, like with um, Buteau, the performers might be in the park, might be crazy, um, exhibit craziness. Um, I know that's not the PC, uh, mentally unstable. Um, uh, but there's a rip in the human order, order as these Butoh performers are expressing uh, this dance of schizophrenia, uh, an interior mode of solipsism. They are giving a comment to the, the decay and ri rigid, um, contrived uh, environment of the city and network um, where they are performed. Otherwise, 
Um, they're performed in the woods, again, with the same problem Andrew Goldsworthy has. Um, if a tree falls in a wood and no one's there to hear it, did it make a noise? Okay. Um, uh, the rip in the reel here is human intention. You walk across and you see this using natural found material here. And this is an aspect of human volition agency to create these forms. Um, here's some beehive forms made in the woods, um, which, like with Butoh, like with that uh, all-correcting mirror, um, we looked at Vivian Mayer in creating her own sort of mirror of reality as a nurse to Phil Donahue uh, family and a bunch of other people. She was a French woman who took her camera out everywhere. The, the kind of never got let go of the day job, but was a consummate and very sensitive artist. These people, we assume, head out into the woods. The Butoh performers, Andrew Goldsworthy, a Scotsman in, intensely aware of the beauty of the Scottish um, highlands, um, the seacoast of Scotland, and tried to create, here's just using no spray paint, nothing, creating different color patterns on top of the structural patterns. Again, the same shot, closer up. You can see the yellow leaves on the inside. Um, many, 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 many hours. And then we compare that to, I think he added this lichen. It's not, or maybe uh, pasted um, wet leaves into this area. So we see this rip in reality. We see the so-called continuous um, procedural reality of nature, time, um, uh, Darwinian survival of the fittest, but then we see this um, human agency of, of creating rigid uh, lines, um, disrupting the reality of nature with this simple, found, um, objective um, comments, such as turning a tree into striped lichen. Um, here he is hanging from the tree. Um, here he is uh, working on stones against a tree. Um, is this crazy? Is this um, a natural response to his form of alienation? Um, we don't know. We don't care. The art is not a science. Art is um, hopefully um, something that's always allowed in the in the um, creative functions of human society, no matter how rigid they become, um, that there is a need not to continue to binge Netflix and TikToks, but to get out there and, and uh, put into the world, even in terms of remix culture, which one could say the whole TikTok, Netflix um, platforms uh, enhance creativity on a larger scale. One could say that. Um, and then uh, here he is younger, um, kind of responding to the materials. This is working with this natural slate of upper uh, Scotland, northern Scotland. And um, uh, out of this, there's kind of a similarity with the Taoist, um, Shinto, uh, Ist sort of sensibility of, of, of making a comment on nature and so forth. Um, this has been a, 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 a lecture on design and performance. Uh, what do you do when you're not in the larger settings um, and you continue to um, feel the need to express yourself? Um, make yourself aware though that even these people in their solipsism and isolation of performing in a park um, I forget this famous Japanese artist who paints the circles I forget her name but she lives in a, a, a institution of, of whatever the word is now um, um, mental institution and is driven every day to her studio where he, she performs her OCD art and then goes back 
to live in the mental institution, uh, we see, okay, a dichotomy. The, the notion that um, Deleuze and Guattari life is schizophrenic, modern capitalism does create a, a Midas touch like schizophrenia with everything we touch. Uh, wanting to con uh, uh, quantify our intimates, our family, our abilities to traverse this world, that there's no um, room for the Aristotelian leisure, the, the ability to do with the leisure what we wanted to. Um, there's a theory by Dallas Smythe, uh, a great Canadian media theorist, that um, Sleep is our only leisure because usually in that traditional eight-hour span, we are absorbing media, Netflix, TikTok, whatever, to learn, to study up on becoming better um, materialists, uh, fetishists, capitalists um, out of that on top of working. Now, as we saw in that movie, The Future of Work and Death, um, technology is proceeding along, even attacking that, where is the ability of human agency to exist out of that? For this, we are done. We'll see you in the next one.